of their flesh rises up. It creates a deficiency, a lack, a shortage, a failing, a shortcoming in the way that they hear. Something first affects the hearing. They hear something. Wait a minute, that doesn't sound like the stuff that I've been hearing in church. That doesn't sound like what's going on in Pastor Jim's church. There's something else. What is that? That's, that's interesting. I've never heard that before. Again, if you've never heard it before, ask the question, where does what you're saying line up with the Word of God? That's a simple question. It's not that show me in the Word what you're doing. Keep reading, that's good. Come on. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's in there. No, you don't take one or two words and turn it into a major league doctrine. You, you, you read the word, examine the word, you look what's going on before the word, you look what's going on after the word, and you put the whole thing together. That's how you do it. Itching ears. They want to be scratched by the winds of strange doctrine. It's itchy, and, uh, and what Pastor Jim uh, has preached is not satisfying my itch anymore. Amen. I got to go someplace else. Or I got to hear, I heard something else. Be careful what you hear. Amen. People can no longer receive the instruction, the correction, or the direction that the Word of God offers. So listen carefully. They gather up for themselves those who are sensitive and sympathetic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I hear you. Oh, uh, do you know the Word of God says this? Yeah. Can you believe that? Oh. Can you believe that they cor they corrected me and they and they directed me and they tried instructing me with the Word of God? Can you believe that? And I got offended. Well, then you've been offended by the word. Congratulations. You've been offended by the word of God. Thank God that you weren't offended by a man. Come on. Praise God that you were offended by the word. Yes. That way there I got out of the way. Isn't that, I like that. You know? Amen. Give him the word. Give him the word. The Bible says the message in their ears turns from the source of all truth to fables. It's a fable. It's a tale that's a fiction. That's fiction. They give you a fictitious thing. Maybe they season it with a little bit of a word here and a little bit of the word there, and they present it to you. It's all false doctrine. You know the story, you can dress up a pig, but it's still a pig. <laughs> right. Right. Amen? Right. Sure. But it's got a bow in its, on its head. It doesn't matter, it's a pig. Right. Yeah. Identify it for what it is, peel away the things that look good on it, and you'll find a pig. Where's the pig? It's going to go back to the slop. What should we do? The Bible tells us, doesn't it? Be watchful in all things. Watch out. Look at your neighbor. Tell him or her. Watch out. 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 Rob and Mary, watch out. Be watchful in all things. How about this scripture? This is, I just want to read it because it's just like, it's like God served it to me in a, in, a, in a platter this week when I was preparing. Listen to this scripture. Watch your life and your doctrine closely. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. 1 Timothy 4.16 Watch your life and your doctrine closely. Persevere in them 
Because if you do, you're saving more than just yourself. You're saving yourself and you're saving saving the ones that are hearing the purity of the doctrine that's coming from you, the purity of the doctrine that you live in. And they're saying, wow, there's something different about that guy. He's not wavering. He's not going off the track. I don't want to go off the tracks. If I do, I want to quickly get back on. Mm. The word continues in the area of perseverance when it says, this. Endure afflictions. I don't really like that word. Endure afflictions. In other words, endure in the word when you suffer trouble. Amen. Man, there's a lot of things that are coming against us. Is there a lot of things coming against people right now? You don't have to raise your hands because I know there's a lot of things. But you know what? When you're in the word and if you stay, stay in bounds. Yes. Stay in bounds. Stay within the lines. Here it is right here. Well, you know, God's word is changing. Well, show me where it's changing. Where's your scripture that backs up God's word is changing? I, the Lord God, do not change. Well, you know, it's how you interpret scripture. Well, how do you interpret it then? You better be interpreting scripture with scripture. God's word better line up with God's word, which lines up with God's word, which lines up with God's word, which lines up with God's word. That's the way it is. Come right now. That's the way it is. Some people want to hear something different. I got, I got to have a new word. I got a new teacher. There's something hot off the presses. Well, what press is it printed? <laughs> That's my question. Who printed it? Did heaven print it? Let them all speak against you for holding firm in the word. Let them speak. Matter of fact, it would produce good, there's good pride. It would produce good pride in me. For people to speak against me if I was holding true to the purity of God's words. Right. Mm -hmm. That I may be found faithful. Because you know that when you do that, here's the number one thing I want you to share. Man, I'm getting pounded, God. I'm at work and I'm sharing the word. I'm getting pounded. But remember this. Step away and remember God is your defense. Right. Amen. There you go. He's your protection. And the Bible says, do the work of an evangelist. I'm not an evangelist. You are an evangelist, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. Because an evangelist is a preacher of the gospel. Right. All of us preach. Right. You preach if you're a nurse. You preach if you're a preacher. <laughs> Amen? Yes. Yes. Whatever your workplace is, you become a preacher in that workplace of the good news. Okay. And they're listening because they hear all different kinds of things. They come in there all full of whatever. Yes. Do the work of a preacher of the gospel. Here's a couple of, of things that you can do that helps you. Just work with things. Keep it simple. Yeah. Amen. Because they are confused because of the messages that are right now out there in the Christian church. Keep it simple. Keep it truthful. Thank you, Jesus. Preach the truth. Yes. Keep it hopeful. <laughs> Hello. Hey, don't you know, by the way, uh, sir, that um, if you continue in the lifestyle you're in, you're going straight to hell. I just thought I'd let you know that. <laughs> 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 Okay, now that, that is that that's that could be true. Yeah, that's not going to win a whole lot of folks. Because in essence, what you're doing is you're heaping condemnation and judgment on top of them, and you just want to hit them with love. Hit them with love. Amen. 
So you keep it simple, you keep it truthful, you keep it hopeful. And the last thing, there's actually five things, because this is a combo thing. Keep it full of love and grace. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. yeah. Keep it full of love and grace. Love these people. You love them into righteousness. You don't hammer them into righteousness. Right. right. Never hammered anybody into it. I've heard some stories. If you get hammered in the righteousness, you're probably going to have a tough road to hoe when you get to church. Because there's going to be loose in you that same um, um, attitude to do the same thing to other people. Oh yeah, I got saved by getting hit over the head with the Bible. I can't wait till I see the first verse. I'm gonna let them. I'm gonna clock them. Because that's the no. You keep it simple. You keep it truthful. You keep it hopeful, and you keep it full of love and grace. And people will be drawn. That's it. They'll be drawn. All right. Almost done. Um. How many people agree that we're the mouthpiece of God? You believe that? So we represent God in his word. That's just it. That's just truth. Got to think about that. I want that to roll around here because I'm going someplace. Going to the Old Testament, actually. And you know the scripture very well, but I'm going to read a little bit more of it. And now I'm going to focus on the one I want to. Isaiah 55, verse 8. Probably a lot more of it than you can be uh, um, take out of it and read, but I'm going to just focus on a few here. <clears throat> because, man, it just kept getting so encouraging. So encouraging. 55 and 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. See, we got to remember that, right? Yeah. right? Nor are your ways my ways. We better know that, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than yours, so my ways are higher than your ways. So that's why it's always that issue of humility, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yes. well, you have to understand, um, Jim, I'm up here, you're down there. I'm higher than you, the way I think, the way I talk. Just get over the fact that you think that maybe you can exalt yourself above me. Because the day you get to think that, I'll drop you right where you are. <laughs> and that's just the truth. Why would he drop me? Oh, isn't that hard? You know what? He dropped me. He'll, he'll put me down because he loves me. That's right. Verse 10, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11, so my word that goes forth from my mouth it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing from which I sent it. Amen. Amen. Talking about this right here. Right? right? I'm going to I'm give it an interesting twist, though, in just a minute. For you, verse 12, shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the horn shall come up the cypress or thorn it shall come up the cypress tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name. For an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Somebody better say amen to that word. Huh? Now, I focused on a famous little passage which happens to be verse 11. Many of us quote it. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing which I sent. Right? You all know that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What happens then, keeping that focused, what happens then if I decide to use my word and not his word? Mm -hmm. Let me read the scripture for you. If I decide to get in the way of God, God, excuse me, I got this. Okay? 
Here it goes. <clears throat> so shall Jim's word, that goes from Jim's mouth, it shall return to me void. It shall not accomplish what I please, and it shall not prosper in the thing which Jim sent it. So if we think we're all that, and we can, we got a better word than the word of God. That is what I will read. That is, it's not going to be prosperous with Jim. It's only prosperous with the Lord. Because it says, so shall my word, capital M, that, that goes forth from my mouth. That's the only thing that where prosperity lies. Not in the way I want to do it. The way it says it here. Right. Again and again and again and again. Oh, I got something better than the word. Repent quick. Yes. Mm -hmm. As quick as you can. Oh, I got a, a, you know, I got an opinion. Okay, well, you got, what is it? Well, it doesn't line up with the word of God. I'm not so proud to say that Pastor Jim Daydre does not have the words. But with pride, I stand behind this pulpit today and I said, God's got the words. Yes. And God is using me as his mouthpiece yes. to release the purity of yes. his word so we can see the kingdom advance, so we can see the prosperity of people right before our very eyes. And so I can get over myself and point up to heaven and say, thank you, God, for what you did. It's not about me. It's about you. Whatever you want to accomplish for God, it's about this. It's about this. It's about the word. Well, what shall I give a new believer? Give a new believer the words. Where are they going to go? In the word of God. Because in the word of God, Sherry, Pastor Sherry said it's about the washing of the mind. The water of the word washing the mind. And we have dirty minds. For crying out loud, we're in the kingdom 25, 35, 45 years. Our minds are dirty. They need to constantly be scrubbed. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody asked me once, and they pointed a finger at me, church. And they said, you guys, uh, you know, uh, you guys uh, control, you know, you got, you, you, you control minds and stuff like that. No, oh, yeah, yeah, well, you know, God, God's got my mind. Yeah. Right. You need a, you know, you, you guys, what's the word I was trying to think of? I'm losing the word. Brainwash. Thank you. You guys are brainwashed. I said amen and hallelujah. I'm brainwashed. The word of God has washed my dirty brain, and he's going to do it until the day I go to be with Jesus Christ. Thank you, somebody, for the brainwash. I was just like, that went off the radar. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome yeah. back. You shall go out with joy and be let out in peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth. The trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall be the cypress tree. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. Everything is going to be established because of God's word. Yes. Yes. God said it. God said it. So if we say God's word, see God spoken into existence. If we share God's word with people, it's a creative thing coming out of our mouths. I don't see how this can happen. Go watch the movie Breakthrough. Go oh, yeah. see that. I can't tell you anything about it because yeah. but go watch it. Bring a bucket, a bucket, a truckload of Kleenex with you. And go see it. So many lessons. So many lessons. Wow. So many lessons. Just too many to uh, but it's just a beautiful, powerful yeah. movie. I thought about David this morning. I wasn't going to share this, but I'll share it quick because it fits nicely. Thought about David. <clears throat> David needed to carry what God told him for him to carry to defeat Goliath. Mm -hmm. Some stones. Um, yeah. That's all he needed. Yeah. 
But see, he came up to the battle lines and Saul came up to him and said, hey, you need to wear this. You need to put this on. Now, listen to this very carefully concerning the word and concerning the opinions of people. Come on. He was all ready to go, and the king stood up. Now, how many people wouldn't be influenced by the king? Hey, hey, uh, hey, uh, Daniel, I'm the king. I want you to put my stuff on. You know? Yeah. But see, we have to be careful, even as influence, influential as man is. Yeah. Even after David tried to put it on, it, it, it wasn't fitting him. Right. Let me tell you, it wasn't fitting them right in the spirit, and it wasn't fitting them right in the natural. That's right. right. Because it wasn't something that God said put on. That's right. That's right. Come on, man. That's good. He said, I can't do I, I can't wear this stuff, you know? Not only that, I don't, you know, I got, I got what, everything I need. God said, the stone in the sling, and I'm going to drop that giant, and I'm going to drop him like a bad habit, and I'm going to bury this stone inside that dude's forehead so bad, he's not even going to know what hit him. And I got to tell you, but from the story, I don't believe he knew what hit him. Because right. that young boy that already killed bears and lions came running at him. I can hear the noise. Yeah. Yeah. Because he practiced so much out there in the field when he was watching out. He had to zap a few of those things to keep him away from the sheep. So he was ready to go, and he was a studly young man. He was not a skinny, he was a studly dude. And he came at that and he dropped him. Yeah. He didn't need man's armor. He needed the word of the Lord. Come on now. Be careful about that in your life because. You know what? It's all about God. It's all about God's word. It's all about he's my protector. He's yes. my defense. He's my stronghold. He's my fortress. Yes. He's my refuge. In him will I trust. Yes. Amen. That's what it's all about. That is what it's all about. Amen. Isn't it true? Yes. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Yes. Amen. 